Hello everyone, Tim Hillcove here with the Weekly Wine Journal. I'm here at the Camelback Here's Camelback Mountain. I'm here with Robert Craig. Hi Mr. Craig. Hi Tim, how are you? <laughs> Good. Are you enjoying your, your trip here to Arizona so far? Oh, well, I always enjoy Arizona. I really love this place. Uh, as I told you earlier, I was born in Bisbee and my wife and I actually have a house in Tucson. Ah, so, so, we come so there's here. an Arizona connection here. Huge Arizona connection. <laughs> you know, it's funny when you live in Napa Valley, everybody thinks, well, that's the greatest place on earth. I really love Napa Valley, but for Lynn and I to get away and and we really consider Arizona our sanctuary where we go to be on the desert and relax. You were t you were telling me earlier that you actually um, had a background in the Coast Guard. Is yeah, that right? that's right. What were you doing in the Coast Guard? Well, I joined the Coast Guard right out of high school from uh, a very small town in Texas called Dickinson, Texas. And that's how I ended up in California. I got stationed at, uh, in San Francisco uh, and uh, really fell in love with the area. When I got out of the service, came back and went to college there, met my wife Lynn. And that, that's how I ended up in the wine business. We really got interested in wines. I used to go up to the Napa Valley when there were only six or seven wineries and and, and uh, you know spend the whole weekend just tasting wines and learning about wines. You, you were getting into wines and you said around about the mid-60s mid when 60s, uh, yeah. when you, um, Robert Mondavi was yeah. just starting out there. Interesting because you you were going kind of against the the sort of cultural flow at the time which <laughs> might have been you know to hang out on Haight Ashbury and, and be cool and instead you had the sort of foresight and vision to go up into the hills and, and, and go old world. Well, I first found an avenue to get into the wine business in 1978. And uh, the, the path I took was uh, I was working for a investment company, an asset management company in San Francisco. Another guy and I did a study on vineyards as a form of partnership investment. How coincidental. And we, <laughs> we finished it and we took a look at each other and said, why don't we do this? So I, I, I basically quit my job, and my wife Lynn supported me for, for two years while, uh, while we put together a partnership that bought a vineyard actually up on Mount Veter, up in the mountains. Up in Mount Veter, and now you were actually instrumental in, in getting Mount Veter uh, as, as an AVA, is that right? That's correct, yeah. And, and also Spring Mountain? Uh, well, the chronology of it is that uh, we put together a group that bought a vineyard on, on Mount Veter, and then Donald Hess, about three or four years later, bought that vineyard property from the partnership and asked me if I'd stay on and be uh, managed, uh, planning out the balance of the vineyard and starting a small winery. So yep. I was there from 1980 to 1990. That was the, the initial, the starting of the Hess collection? The Hess collection winery. Oh, okay, good. And we worked on getting that approved as an AVA for about three or four years. And it finally came through in 1989. So it, it is not a quick thing that you. It's not. It's, no. it's, 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 well, I guess it's you got to have patience, like, like winemaking. Yeah, and and you know it, it's a process dealing with the government. <laughs> so you got to go through all the steps and and uh, answer all the questions and and we we achieved that in 1989, and then by 1990, uh, we pretty much decided that we wanted to do our own our own brand and make our own wines. So by 92, that's when, is the 92 the first vintage of the Robert yeah. Craig? Yeah, from wow. 1990 to 1992, I did a lot of experimental winemaking, different sections of the Napa Valley, different area, to, to see what sort of grapes we wanted to work with, what sort of wines we wanted to make. And so we pretty much had pulled all that together by 1990. Would you say you enjoy what, working more with the, the mountain grapes more than the others, or is there a preference for you? Well, or? that sort of came to me in a in really very uh, fortuitous way. In the, in the mid-70s, when Lynn and I were still living in San Francisco, I had an opportunity to belong to a tasting organization called the Vintners Club, which is a really, really outstanding organization. And in the Vintners Club, uh, I had a chance to taste different mountain wines from Napa Valley, and that, that's what, and I became so intrigued with the concentration and depth and structure of these wine. And when I finally found a way to get into the Napa Valley, that's why we started Mountain Beater, <laughs> because I really wanted well, to do Mountain A lot of people you had mentioned before had asked 
always ask, what's next for Robert Craig? And uh, I really liked your answer. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I, I sort of relate that to a difference in culture between, I think, the American culture and the European culture. In, in American culture, in business especially, if you're not doing something bigger and better all the time, you're not succeeding. Where I think in European cultures, they reach a, a point where they're doing what they want to do, and their focus is on doing it better. You know, we're I'm uh, moving on in years, <laughs> and instead of wanting to make more wine all the time, I'd rather make better wine all the time. And so our real focus is to staying right around 10,000 cases, but really doing everything we can to make better and better wines. And, and to me, that would be, uh, I guess, the measure of success that I, I, I'd want.